and truly we can say God is a good God. Amen. Yeah, hallelujah. We can truly say that God is a good God because he has been good to us. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. He's been good to us. Amen. And notwithstanding the good part, the better part I like about it, it ain't that his good to us is based on our being good to him. Can I get a witness? Because we ain't necessarily been so good to him. Can I get a witness? But he looks beyond our faults. Can I get a witness? And he sees to our needs. Amen. And that alone qualifies, makes him a great God. Amen. Woke us up this morning. Close up our right mind. We might not feel the best that we want to feel. Amen. I know I don't, but I'm here. Amen. But you're here. Amen. You may not be able to raise your, you know, raise your foot up too high, but amen. As long as it's higher than what that grave got over there happening for us, I believe, amen, amen. I believe we ought to give God something. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. He deserves our praise today. Amen. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy. Can I get somebody to say worthy? Can I get somebody to say worthy? The name of our God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. And so we magnify the great God of our salvation today for being a merciful God to us. Amen. And the fact, the fact about it that I love is that he did not have to do it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He didn't have to do it, man. But his mercy. Hallelujah. His grace towards us. Allow him to touch us one more day and to give us a mind to love and serve him. Amen. Amen. There is none that can do us like Jesus. Amen. Amen. And because we can search, we can look, we can do all we can, we will never find one that can do us like Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us that men ought to always pray. Amen. It says, men ought to always pray Hallelujah. and not faint. Suggesting this simple thought, then if it says that men ought to always pray and not faint, that, that says that praying and fainting don't go together. If we're praying, then we're not fainting. Can I get a witness somebody? And if we're fainting, we definitely are not praying. But he says, he says that when we pray, we, we pray knowing that he is a prayer answering God. Whatever I need be, whatever our situation be, he is a God that hears Mama Jerry and answers prayer. Prayer is the key. Old folk used to say, say that faith unlocks the door. Then they would go a little further and say, if, uh, 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 if you got the faith, God has the power. Well, that sounds good, Mama, 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 Mama Jerry, but I, I think I, I think the analogy of that was okay, but it better, it's better than the fact because regardless of our faith, God has the power. Can I get a witness today? Amen. It ain't according to our faith, my bride. It's according to his, his power and his love divine for us. Amen. So whether we got faith or that at all, we can have the sure fact to know that he has the power. Yeah. Amen. We want to go to the Lord. Amen. In prayer, knowing that our needs he will supply, knowing that he will answer by and by. If there be a request, you can lift it to him. God already knows. Amen. He already knows. Say he already knows. He already knows. Hallelujah. 
But the thing about it is, amen, when we bring it to him, we know now that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Where we can find grace and help at the time of our need. And how many know we need him today? Amen. I know I need him. I ain't going to bluff it. Amen. I, I ain't got no time to be playing poker face. I need God. Amen. And I need him in my life. Actively, Mama B. I, I ain't talking about that. I, I, I want him there. He there um, uh, because I say he there. And I want him to be there. And I want to know for the assured fact that when I need him, he's going to hear my cry. Amen. If we come toward the altar, amen, and we go to our, in our altar prayer, come knowing, come believing, that simple fact, that, but that God will answer prayer, amen. Knowing that whatever I need is, he will, amen, supply. Want to continue to pray for our church. Want to continue to pray for our church to see the road. Baptist Church that God will continue to strengthen us, build us, fortify us, amen, build us, make us, shape us, hallelujah, into the people, the ministry, the church, amen, that he would have us be, that he would continue to, amen, work in us, amen, and so that when others come, they can see the love and feel the love of him in us. Can I get a witness? Amen. Hallelujah. Bless his name. We want to continue to pray for every um, member, member, every family, assess the, every family that is a part, amen, of our ministry, that God would bless each home, that he would bless each family, amen. amen, that he would bless our families, our extended families, those that are connected to us, amen. We need his protection, we need his guidance, we need his help, amen, and we want to continue to lift up all of those that we are duty bound to pray for, amen, I pray for you, you pray for me, and together we'll watch God change things, can I get a witness, amen, hallelujah, bless his name, we want to lift up in prayer, continue to pray for, for us, the Darby family, we want to, uh, uh, ask that you will pray for us and so that we are praying for each and every one of you and each of us as a collective whole. Oh, we are praying a part of our daily prayer is that God will continue to bless, amen, us, the people of God, serving in this vineyard for him, amen, amen. amen. I want to ask that you would give a special prayer our cousin, uh, our cousin, um, Brother Ronald Duckett, um, he's, uh, we dealt with him on yesterday. He has congestive heart failure and a few other things happening. And so uh, he's in the hospital and um, you don't know him, but just say, Lord, touch Brother Ronald. He needs God's touch, amen. And uh, want to keep him in prayer, amen. My, my old prayers that I, I talk to him is I say, man, you know, it's one thing about, you know, people get it mixed up. Uh, people get it mixed up with suggesting that because they know about God that they have God. You don't have God if you're not living for God. Amen, somebody. You don't, I don't care what we think. We don't have God if we're not living for God. We, we have to be living for him. Hallelujah. And I said, Doc, you know God all. You know who he is. He's you know it is, you've been a part of it, his him and been in your life in and out all your life. But hey God, it's a time now that you make it real. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And I, so I told him, I said, hey, they they can everybody else talk to you. Then I said, bro, I'm gonna I said your cousin's gonna come at you in a whole nother way. Hey bro, it's time that you make it real. Yes, I guess I'll be six or seven in two months. I said, Doc, you talking about six, seven, in two months, and you hardly breathing now at 15%. You better make sure you got God, Doc. Right now, hallelujah, that's his name. Ain't no time, and I say that to say, it's no time to be playing, amen. amen. With nothing, our lives or anything, amen. Our lives are in the balance, amen. And today we're here, tonight we gone. Amen. We better make sure that we know the Lord. 
Now, let me say that a little different. We better make sure that we have the Lord. Right. Hallelujah. We better make sure, and, and, and we ain't making sure that we have any Mama Jerry just because we come to church. That ain't having him. That ain't having him. We have to have the assurance in our hearts that our lives is hidden in Christ in God. Amen. So lift him up in your prayer. Amen. That God will touch him, heal him, heal him spiritually and physically. Amen. For his Lord, for his honor. Any other, and whoever, anyone else that may have family or someone in the hospital, amen. Uh, we want to believe God together, amen. Because God is able. Can I get a witness? Amen. God is able today, amen. Amen. Her mother, amen. Want to keep her lifted up in prayer, amen. Amen. Any, anyone else, anyone else, anyone else want to give that opportunity? Hallelujah. And, and the Barnes family. Okay. All right. Oh my God. All right. Definitely. We'll lift them up. Baby. The Barnes family. All right. We'll do. We'll do. We'll do. Amen. Hallelujah. I need the. this 
morning. We say hallelujah to your name today. We say hallelujah to your name today. We say hallelujah to your name today. Lord, your goodness towards us, your mercies towards us, your unmerited favor, oh God. We don't deserve one ounce of it, but your love, your mercy continues to give us yet another day, and for that we say thank you. Lord, we, if we had 10,000 tongues, we could not use them enough. If we had 10,000 hands, we couldn't use them enough to lift and to praise and to magnify your name. But such as we have today, we open our mouths and say hallelujah to your name. We open our mouths and say thank you, Heavenly Father. We put our hands together and we clap in honor to your name because, Lord, we're grateful today. We're grateful you saw fit to not allow us to be still laying in our bed, unmovable with no life and no, no heat, no warmth, no heartbeat. You woke us up this morning. You woke us up this morning. You woke us up this morning. You started us on our way. Health and strength. Regardless of how good or bad it may be, with health and strength, and you continue to make provisions for us. You said you do it. You said you give us this day and our daily bread. And we thank you for being such a God to us today. Father, we lift the Barnes family to you. Lord, the loss of family member, Lord, we pray that you reach out wherever they are and touch their hearts. Touch their hearts right now, Father God. They need you. They need you in a special way. Hearts that are hurt, hearts that are broken, hearts that need mending. Do it, God, by your power form. They need you in the midst of their bereavement, their heartache, their pain. Touch them by your power, by your spirit, we pray. Lord, we pray and ask that you live and touch Ronnie out there in Riverside. Touch his mind. Touch his heart. Lord, touch his body. Raise him up. Be a will. Raise him up. But Lord, make his, get his mind right. Let his mind be turned for the mind of you, we pray. Save him. Make, make sure that salvation is his number one need and gain. Lord, we pray for every family connected to our ministry, every family. We pray that you would touch right now. Continue to meet every need. Continue to meet every need according to your riches in glory. Father God, we pray that you would bless our worship today. Let everything we say and do, Lord, let it be pleasing unto you. Let our lives, hallelujah, Lord, let our lives, let our lives bring glory to your name. We give your name continued praise. We give your name continued praise. We give your name continued praise. And we give your name continued honor. We will bless you at all times and your praises shall be in our mouths. You've been so good, you've been so grand, you've been so merciful, you've been so loving to us. We give your name all glory, honor, and praise. It's all in your name we pray and ask it in your precious name. And for your name's sake, we say amen, 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 and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you this morning, amen. God bless you this morning, amen. The Bible also says, just like it, like it says that men ought to always pray and not faint. The Bible also says, and it asks the question, will a man rob God? It doesn't answer it figuratively, but it does suggestively because when it says, 
will a man rob God? Then it comes in the scripture and said, yet he have robbed me. Questions asked, what would have you robbed? He said, in time and in offering. Praises of the Lord. Amen. Father God, we come. This time and this hour to speak at hand. Speak on the behalf of you to this, this, this waiting crowd of your servants, your people, God, that have come to hear word from you. Lord, and as the salutation says, without a word from you, what will we do? So then, God, we pray and we ask that even now you will bless the word to the ears of the hearers, that you would fortify, enrich, oh God, and perpetuate your word even now. Father God, that the ear of the listener that would receive it would, oh God, receive it with open hearts, open minds, but also, God, with feverish perspective to want not just to hear from you, but to apply that which you shall speak to our lives, that we can fortify ourselves as to being better Christians, better believers, better servants for thee. As I have supplied and given the mechanics, I pray now, God, that you send the dynamics. I can't preach unless you're anointed. I can't minister. I can't. Father, it's all you. And I know that I need you, but I do know I can do all things through you who strengthens me. So as I pray each time I stand high beneath your cross, please, oh God, allow your blood to fluently flow. That as I stand, I stand not in myself, but that I stand totally and completely in thee. You are the potter, we are the clay. Mold us, shape us after thine own will. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh. And we will be careful to continue to give your name the praise, the glory, the honor which is to it. And we ask it all in your name. And for your name's sake, we pray. Every heart said, Amen. Amen. And Amen. Little song that's dear to my heart. It was one of the old school ones. My daddy used to sing this one. It was one of his favorite songs. Amen. Real simple one. <clears throat> Just said, Like a ship that's tossed and driven, mm, battered by an angry sea. When the storms of life are raging and the spirit falls on me, well, I wonder what I have done. Oh, that makes this race so hard to run. But I say to my soul,
just like it is a fact that he gave his life, he died, mm -hmm. just like it is a fact that in, in, in dying and giving his laying down his life, he rose again, just like those three factors are uh, uh, the truth are true and literal and actual and factual, I must apply to our minds this morning as well that then also the fact, the last fact to that is that he, arose, he ascended. Mm -hmm. The ascension is just as factual, amen, just as real as the other three. The fact of the matter is, it's because of the ascension that categorizes and allows all the first three to have their preeminence. Amen. How do you mean, Bishop? Because without him going away, somebody say go away. Oh. If it was not for his going back all right. into heaven, That's right. bless his name, the, the, the story would not have been completed. Mm -hmm. the, are you with me? The story would not have been the, the plot, the plan. Somebody say the plan. The plan of God would not have been completed. Mm -hmm. So the ascension is, is vital, necessary. Mm -hmm. it's, it's actual necessary because it was the final, if you will, scene of God's great production. Mm -hmm. In Saving mankind. All right. Hallelujah. Turn with me to the book of Acts. Book of Acts, the very first chapter. <clears throat> Acts chapter 1. <clears throat> Acts chapter 1. And we're looking at verses 1. Through fourteen. <sighs> Acts one, verse one, down to verse fourteen. I'm not going to read all of those, but I'm going to read down to verse eleven. Acts chapter one, Acts of the Acts of the apostles, the actual word, the acts of the apostles mean just that. Acts is not the name of an apostle, it's not the name of somebody, it's, it is the word actions being broken down to a singular perspective as in the act, a act, amen? The acts with the S does make it plural. Because it's not speaking of one apostle, apostle, but of all of them. Amen? The acts of the apostles, what they were doing, what they did, what transpired, what happened with them. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> First chapter of the book of Acts of the apostles, verse 1, we shall find these words and this first chapter is speaking of that very act that I suggested to us that made God's plan succeed. This chapter is talking about the ascension. The ascension. The former <clears throat> the former treaties have I made O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he threw the Holy Ghost and had given commandments unto the apostles, whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of thing of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them he, they them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait. Somebody say wait. wait, wait, wait. But wait for the promise. 
of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but he, ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for your respect to the author as well as to the reading of the word. Amen. This morning, I do believe this to be the word of God. <clears throat> I present it to us this morning in that fashion. I embrace the words of scripture where the gospel writer records before one jot or one tittle of this word shall pass away heaven and earth shall pass away but the word of our God shall stand forever. And if you believe that with me today, amen, believe that with me by giving God a wave offering and saying along with me even this day, even this day, even this day God bless you. To tag this sermonic presentation to us this morning, we're going to sum it up, we're going to, there's a couple of Subjects I, I, that was tossed about my, my mind, and I started. I wrote them all down, and, but one that uh, he, he gave me to to rest with is simply a perspective that lay, that lies here nestled in in the midst of this passage between verses at verse four and at verse. Amen. 7, 10, and 11. So, if somebody asks you, what did your preacher, what did your minister, what did your bishop, what did your pastor talk about this Sunday, tell them that he talked about the promise. That's it. Simple as that. The promise. The promise. You look at me and say, promise. Promise of what, Bishop? What, 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 what promise? Here, Jesus is yet teaching his disciples. We know that he handpicked these 12 men. We know that he picked them all from various perspectives, various work environments. Nobody did the same thing. Everybody was something different except Peter and I believe, amen, John um, and two or three were, they were the fishermen, amen. That's why he told them, drop your nets and I'll make you fishers of men. But outside of that, he had a tax collector, he had a doctor, he had somebody from various walks of life, amen. Twelve men, 
he hand chosen, 12 men he hand picked. And with those 12 men that he picked, Jesus revolutionized the world. With those same 12 men, we find in scripture that he's often talking with them, having uh, intimate time and moments with them. And when we say intimate, we don't mean in a, uh, a, a, a man and woman tangible way. We mean in a tender and a soft moment, an endearing moment, a time of reflection, a time of, of, of talk with and talk to that was serious, serious and sincere talk time. Amen. You know, uh, you know, you can talk to somebody and you can talk uh, 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 intimately to them in relation to what it is that you're talking with because it's a passion about what you're talking about. Can I get a witness? Yeah. And so Jesus, we find him often in said type manners with the disciples. And if we were to think about why would we catch him in so many times of doing, talking to them in that type, in that intimate way and manner, it was moreover because what all he said to them, he wanted to make sure they got it. Whatever Jesus taught and said to those 12 men were words of life, words of truth, and true words that was words conveyed to the kingdom of his father. So yes, they were intimate times, they were intimate moments, and he was he did it intimately with them because he wanted to ensure, he wanted to make sure of the fact of what he had taught, what he was saying, what he was conveying would stick in their minds, would stick in their hearts. And so we find him here in this latter perspective of the, 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 the whole scenario that makes our lives as Christians be, be a, uh, a true entity and a true um, scenario of salvation being given available to us as a free gift from God the Father free gift that he gave by sending his only son Jesus, his only begotten son Jesus to come and die upon the cross to take away the sins of the world. Can I get a witness? Yeah. The plan of God was to make and to redeem mankind from the state that he had put himself in by continually willingly sinning against him. Yeah. Now we know how it happened at the beginning. Brother Adam did it. Say Adam. Yeah. Adam messed it up because Adam was charged with what God's commandment was. God said of the tree that is in the midst of the garden known as I named it the tree of life. Do not touch it. Amen. Do not touch it. It's real simple. Shall I tell you? Can I get a witness? It, it means simply that. Because if you don't touch it, you can't taste it. All right. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. so, well, so to get to the taste suggested that they clearly disobeyed the law of God. Yeah. But no, parenthetically, when Sister Eve ate it, everything was still copacetic. Can I get a witness? No change had happened when Eve ate it. Nothing happened when she suggested to Adam. See, nothing changed. He said that they we eat it, we should have died. I'm not dead, I'm alive. The serpent told me. Somebody say the serpent. The serpent. Yeah, the serpent. The serpent told him I'm be. He just don't want you to be a God like him. But that's how he told him. He beguiles us. What he, what he, he can't make us. He don't have the power to make us, but he, he beguiles us. Yeah. He, intends, he entices us. Mm -hmm. Nothing's happened to me, baby. And it's such good fruit. Go well, taste it. God probably just wanted to keep it all to itself. God didn't tell Eve anything. That's right. God told Adam. Amen. God walked. Talked with Adam as the 
word says in the eve, in the cool of the day, in that beautiful place called the Garden of Eden that he made just for them. We know the story. The whole world was changed out of a act of share and take. She shared. He took. He ate. And all, as they say, hell broke loose. Because the world has not been the same since. Can I get a witness? So God devised a plan, sent his son Jesus, come give his life, all of the sacrificial, all of the sacrificial killing of lambs and turtle doves and sheep, um, that was evidently wearing out. Men kept getting more sinful, although they were sacrificing and sending the offering up to God as a sweet spell and savor, he would, uh, uh, he would omit their sin, he would forgive. They would forgive their sin, but um, I guess God saw it to a way of uh, the means to end. He said, well, they're not stopping sinning and along with their sacrifice. In fact, the man is, man has become, and he's getting more, he's getting more wicked and more wise. In other words, Mama Jerry, man keep on sinning and ain't slowed down a bit. How so? Well, we can recall the thought, we can call the perspective, amen, uh, 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 story, amen, Abraham and his, amen, son, uh, I mean, his son, not his son, his nephew, brother Lot, and his family, amen, and, amen, quick, quick, quick review, amen, uh, uh, he told him, amen, look, get your family together, because I'm going to tell you, he sent some angels to tell him this place is wicked, I'm going to destroy the whole place, Solomon Gamar, we remember it. And God kept his word and he did destroy it. And in the, uh, in the fact of destroy, he said, and he tried to even help it. He said, Lot said, please don't destroy it, God. He said, if you, when you say it, if, if you find faith. And so from 50 on down, for however the number was, he was all the way down to 10. And he couldn't find 10 righteous folk in the whole family outside in the, in the whole city outside of Lot's family. Right. That's wicked, man. So wicked till that, that the two angels, the two servants of God that came to administer the news to Lot and his family, Abraham, they, they were so wicked they was trying to tear the door of Lot's house down to obtain the angels. Amen. That's so enough wicked. Can I get a witness? Amen. Spirit, ain't tried to show, ain't tried to show no restraint. So, so devout, Lot offered to give him his daughters. All right. And might they deny, no, we want the two men. That's right. Wicked. Uh -huh. And with directions, as you leave, don't look back. There's got to be one, Chantel. Somebody got to, somebody got to, oh my God, boom, I, I mean, I know the, 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 the thunder, the boom, and the fire, he was tearing it up, he was destroying it. Oh, yeah. I, I can imagine the, the, the thunderous, you know, don't look back. Amen. Somebody Amen. had to give it up. Right. And he said, the word says his wife, look back. She not only looked back, because you can look and still be running. She stopped and looked back. Hmm. And Bob said she did. That was the position. She, she was left in, but she turned into a pillar of salt. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? What are you saying that for? Why are you saying that for? Well, I'm saying that because the instruction, when instructions are given to you, they're for a reason. Amen. They're for a purpose. Hmm. How so? What is the Whenever you are given instructions, they're for a purpose. Well, I told you I'm going to be with you long. There was some perspective in this passage of scripture 
that even as Jesus, Sister Meredith, was going away, he was still teaching them. In his ascension, in his going back to heaven, what is some of his ascension? We know the ascension, the ascension submitted, that suggests the to go up, to raise up, to be lifted up. Are you with me? In this being lifted up, back to heaven, going back to glory, going back to get his rightful place next to his father on his right hand, going back to his throne that he had left for over three, 33 and a half years, went back, going back to heaven, his home, to reside back with his father. He tells them as he's going away, he tells them to go into all the world. Matthew 28. Go ye into all the world and teach the gospel to every creature. I mean, I want you to gather the scene. The scene had, I mean, it was a mega scene. My Maddie, how mega. Here's, here's Jesus, here's the apostles, and then all, he's talking with them, and he's walking with them, talking, and then all of a sudden, a, a calm moment arises, and then all of a sudden, Jesus starts elevated off the ground. Mm, amen. No trick wires. No. Are you with me? Amen. No, 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 no harness on him on the beam with no cable to his back to, to take him up. No machine, no way to hoist him up. Right. But all of a sudden, he's walking with him and they stop for a moment. And all of a sudden, he begins to levitate up. Uh, and started rising uh -huh. and started rising and kept rising Amen. and kept rising Amen. I mean you gotta figure that gotta been a tripped out moment can I get a witness uh -huh. and they watching him yeah. oh my god they astounded at him and they about to flip All right, Jesus says to them Verse 4, the first part of the two promises. First one, chapter 4, verse 4, chapter 1. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, which said he, ye have heard of me. For truly John baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. What is that? How is that a promise? Bishop, how is that? That don't seem like a promise. Well, it is a promise. I said it's two promises that's nestled in this passage of Scripture, and then I'm going to let us alone. That's the first part of the two. He gave them a promise. What? He gave them a promise that he was going to give them something that they did not have. The promise of what? The promise that he was going to give them something that was going to fortify them. Is anybody with me this morning? That was going to keep them as he was going away. What's that? He's been to leave them. The master is going away. Like they said, like they said that, the, 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 before we said that old salutation, Elvis has left the building. Okay? Jesus is leaving the building. He's leaving their lives. He's on his way back to glory. Amen. From whence he came. Amen. Their hearts had to be petrified. Uh -huh. that it's just in the fact of him being, because he's been telling them. He just started today and told I gotta go away. Uh -huh. and, and if I don't go away, then the, the plan of my father will not be fulfilled. Amen. In other words, it, it's I must go. Uh -huh. My going away is a must. Amen. I cannot. When I came, I told you I'm not gonna be with you always. Amen. By going away is expedient. I must go. Yes. Amen. But as I leave, uh -huh. see, I won't leave you. Comfortless. That's right. As I leave you, mm. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Uh -huh. Verse 4 says that you the promise, you need to wait for it 
You need to wait for the promise, the promise of my father, which John did. He baptized you with water, but the promise of my father is that if you wait, if you tarry for it, ye shall indeed be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Yes. yes. Why? Someone said, dude, they need to wait for the promise of the Holy Ghost because as he's going away, they need it. Right. As he's leaving them, on his way back to his father, they need the gift of the Holy Ghost. They need the, the added support of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because Matthew 28, that's why. Go ye into all the world and teach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. What? Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever you and Lord oh, I'm with you oh, yes. I gotta go away yes. but I'm with you Amen. I gotta leave you uh -huh. but know that I'm with you yes. as I leave you mm. I'm not gonna forsake you yeah. but I gotta leave you Amen. can I get a witness I, I, I gotta go because it's the will of my father and I came to do the will of my father. I don't want to go, but I got to go. I got to leave you. Hallelujah. And as I leave you, all the things that I've taught you, all the things that I've shared with you, all the things that I've, uh, I've admonished you, hold on to those things because you're going to need them. And you're going to need them more so now. And along with all the words that I've commanded and gave you, make sure that you do the one last thing, which is wait. Yeah. For the promise. Hallelujah. 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 Wait. Yes. For the promise. Wait. The promise of my father. Yes. What promise? They might have asked him. What promise? The promise of you being endowed with power from on high. Hallelujah. Not He off the ground, number one. 
one, and as he's off the ground, he's slowly rising. And as he's writing, that's what I said. In, as he was ascending, as he left them, he still was teaching them. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, he said, he said, you shall be my witnesses. And he said, and these things have I spoken. And while they were beholding, and as he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. Now how 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 mag how magnifying of a, of, a, of a picture is that to see? He knows what he said. He he he, he began to he began to rise. Uh -huh. He going up. That's just him. No space. El no on air. He just lifting up. And they lock watching and go up, go up, up, and finally to whatever capacity of, of elevation that he got to. Then a cloud. Say a cloud. Then a cloud received. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. When the cloud received him. He say, the word say, the two men, behold, there are two men uh, that stood by in white apparel. He said, which ye, why you, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing uh -huh. into heaven? Uh -huh. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner. The second part of the promise. First part of the promise is to wait. Wait and you shall receive that from the Father which is being baptized by the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah. The promise part two as you're watching him mm -hmm. ascend back into heaven mm -hmm. this same Jesus that you see being taken up into heaven. Mm -hmm. The same shall return in like manner. Yeah. Just as you see him going. Amen. He's coming back the same way. Amen. As you see him lifting up out of your sight. He's also coming back the same way. Amen. Oh yes, the promise was essential because if he had not went away, then you and I would not have been able to be the benefactors of, amen, the promise of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Had not he had went back into heaven sports, then the gift of the Holy Spirit would not have been available, not only to them, but also to you and I today. Amen. I leave you, people of God, with the simple understanding, and that is that the promise was essential. Yeah. Why was the promise essential, you ask? Because if the promise had not been fulfilled, then the word of God would have not been fulfilled. He said that I will not leave you comfortless. Yeah. And because I'm not going to leave you comfortless, he said, I'm going to send you another comforter. And he shall lead you and guide you into all truth. Amen. Can I get a witness today? Amen. The promise, yes, was essential. Why? Because if the promise had not been fulfilled, then the fulfillment of all scriptures would not have been made so. Amen. That's why Jesus could declare in John 14, and he says, and if I go, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Amen. And he says, and if I, if I go, he says, I, I prepare a place for you that where I am, there ye may be also. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm ready and I'm waiting his appearance today. Right. Hallelujah. I want to go to that place where the wicked shall cease from troubling. Yeah. Can I get a witness today? I want to go to that place where the weary shall be at rest. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want to go to that place where all of the saints are at the ages, they're going to sit at his feet and, and they're going to be blessed. I don't know about you today, but I'm going to that land. Hallelujah. I'm going to that land where we'll never, never grow old. Can I get a witness today? How many know that you're ready, that you're ready to go? I ain't talking about getting ready. I'm talking about over so not being ready. Are you ready? 
and my reward is with me to give every man according to as he is work shall be I don't know about you but I'm gonna be ready I'm gonna be ready I I I'm gonna be ready Hallelujah. I'm gonna be ready Just as he went away. Yes. Just as he went away. Yes. He's coming back. Hallelujah. Song says he's coming back. Mm. You good, mama. He's coming back. You good, mama. Yes. He's coming back. He said he would. Mm -hmm. He's coming back. Amen. Again. To his name. Yes. He's every day the same. Mm -hmm. yes. He's coming back. Mm -hmm. He said he would. Mm -hmm. He's coming back Hallelujah. again. Yes. Our Lord is coming back to earth again. Hallelujah. Will you be ready? Yes, yes. When Jesus Come.